Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julie Esser. I am the Chief Engagement Officer for CU Ledger. And um, I'm here to show you um, what we are doing in the credit union space, in the credit union industry space. I won't get into specifics about the industry itself, but invite you to come to a session that we have later this afternoon so you kind of understand a little bit more about the impact that we're experiencing using uh, the Hyperledger Indie project and, and specifically uh, the MyCUID. Just briefly who my C or CU Ledger is, we are a research action project that started two years ago um, as one of the largest consortiums in the world. And this is made up of primarily credit unions in the US, but it twi quickly took a more global aspect. And we are, uh, our mission is to deliver the world's premier platform of digital exchange. And digital exchange to us means three different things. One, relating to identity since identity is foundational to everything we do, but then also into information and the use of smart contracts, um, because there are a lot of uh, legal processes that exist in credit unions and other financial institutions. And then the third component is relating to currency, and we're most particularly interested in cross-border payments. So why is this so foundational? Because when you think about uh, a credit union or a financial institution relationship with that member, every interaction that they have starts with identifying who they are. Um, and my CUID will become the first KYC back digital credential. And we are hoping that through the processes that we establish with my CUID, we're gonna set a new standard, um, a, a gold, gold standard for the use of identity. There are, real briefly, there's a, uh, this is just the ecosystem that makes up the, um, the MyCOID identity. I won't get into a lot of details other than to show you kind of how we envision this all working from the standpoint of the credit unions being the issuer of the MyCOID credentials to the holder who, are, who is the credit union member that has the digital wallet that will store the credentials to the verifier, whether that be the verifier of the, the credit union itself or other credit unions or other entities. Because remember, with self-sovereign identity, everything is all interoperable. The, the ability for the consumer to use it in any way they need to. So that's important. So the demo that I'm going to show you next is relating to the use of my CUID in a call center environment. This was one of our initial proof, uh, proof of concept. And in, in today's process, it's pretty wonky, right? Is there a lot of fix, friction associated with it? So when you call into a call center today, you're asked a, a whole series of questions, the 20 question um, um, interrogation is what we like to call it. So you get the birth date, you usually get uh, address, my personal favorite is what were your last five transactions? I don't know what I did yesterday, let alone my last five transactions. So that's always a challenge for me. But why this is so big is because in the credit union space, relationships is probably the next important asset compared to dollars, to money, right? And so it's important that credit unions use my CUID and their ability to be able to know who they're talking to, to be able to prove it to be able to trust the proof, and to be able to do this in less than five seconds. So let's go through this real quick. I need to get this queued up because there's a little bit of an introduction. <clears throat> This was just working, I swear. All right. So this, the first step in the process is to um, verify that the member is, is proving uh, who they say they are. So the member service representative invites the member to get a MyCUID credential. And that credential then is initiated through a, a, a message. And this is happening really fast. So I'm going to have to try to slow this down or something. Um, but I'll, maybe I'll just let it play out because I don't think I'm going to be able to speak fast enough to show you. But the first, the first part of this is the enrollment. The second part they're going through right now is to be able to issue the credentials themselves. 
Um, and then the third component of this is actually to conduct the transaction. So you'll notice that in, in a lot of the, the slides, you'll see at the bottom that there is an accept or a, a decline option at the bottom. And that's another important security feature because at any time, the, the member can say, hey, I'm not the one calling in, you know, so decline it. Or yes, I am the person calling in and I can accept it. At this point in time, right now, the, the member is going to conduct the transaction. And what you're seeing in the background there is the application that the call center representative has on their desk. So you'll see that in the far right um, corner there, there's this authentication piece. See that it turned green there, indicating that it's okay to allow that credential to take place. And the very last part of it was more of a, a feature associated with a lost or stolen credential. So that at any time a member has, by chance, loses his or her phone, they can call into the credit unions and they can deactivate it immediately. You know, and then they'll have to go through the recovery process that, that exists. But that provides the control that the credit union has over the, the um, uh, securing the digital identity so that in case of a loss of sterling situation, they cannot be used or compromised. Questions? Yes, please. Yeah, so I mean, that'll be a part of the trust framework uh, that is associated with the whole my COID credential to define that. So we're right now building on top of what has already been created for self-sovereign um, and or the sovereign foundation, and then it'll be specific to credit unions on top of that for the use of the my COID credentials. So yes, there will be some sort of delegation because. Um, uh, you know, the average age of a credit union member today is 48, so it's going to be important to have that kind of component available from a social aspect. Any others? You want to see it one more time? <laughs> Yeah, so um, the call center was probably the easiest one just because of the, the least amount of integration. But we're looking at all components. It's call in, walk in, log in is how we term it. So any interaction that the credit union has with their members, the, they'll be able to use those credentials. And to quote a CEO of a, a CIO of a credit union, what's important for them is to make sure that the member has a seamless experience and use one authentication method regardless they're in the digital branch or a call center space. Yes, sir. Um, in general, can companies or organizations also be members of a credit union? And are you granting credentials to companies and organizations? Yeah, so, uh, that's an excellent question. The nature of credit unions is the ability to serve what we call select employee groups. And so these are entities that are established um, that can offer the benefits of a credit union, the financial services of a credit union to an employer and to their employees. Um, and there are, there are credit unions that serve thousands of select employee groups, or we call them SEGs specifically. My question is a little bit different. Let's say I'm a farmer. Yes. Oh, sure, as a business business member, as a commercial type of relationship, absolutely. And they can get a, one of these yeah, so there's really two different ways, right, that you can look at it through the commercial rela relationship that you might have in establishing with a financial institution or in working with the select employee group. And then, in fact, that could probably broaden the use case of um, MyCOID because then if you have like uh, security controls that you have within your own corporation, those credentials could be then incorporated into their wallet as well. Yes, sir. Um, is, uh, I, I might have missed this, but is this ready to roll out in production or are there still edge cases you're working through internally? Um, we are right now in our pilot phase, so we, uh, we completed our proof of concept, and that's kind of where we got to where we are today. Um, but the alpha pilots that we're conducting have just kicked off. We kicked them off last month, and uh, we anticipate those going into the, the first part of 2019, and we're looking for more commercialization, broader commercialization of uh, my COID the second half of 2019. Uh, 
Um, the recovery process, that there is going to be a multifacet process that um, I won't be able to get into a lot of detail, but I know Drummond will be able to share that for you specifically. But I shared one kind of option that would exist using the call center application itself where the member would be able to call in and explain to them that they lost or that they had their phone lost or stolen and they can click a button on their screen and deactivate the accounts. Now the recovery process will go through a whole another type of process, right? Whether that, you know, and that has yet to be defined, but we'll be using a lot of the aspects that built into the Sovereign Foundation to be able to do that. Any others? Mr. Reed? Can you, uh, will a, a credit union member be able to take my CUID and use it elsewhere uh, outside the credit union? Absolutely. I mean, that is uh, the nature of the, the self sovereign identity, right? Is the interoperability component. And yes, um, not only were, are they going to be able to use it within the credit union itself that issued it, but if they have multiple credit union relationships, they'll be able to do it there. If they have other financial institution relationships, they'll be able to take it that step further. And then to a whole like whole nother world, whether that be other employers or governments or retail, um, whatever that is. We're still exploring those type of use cases, but yes, that's the intent. Um, actually, we're a global um, um, industry, so we have um, about 89,000 credit unions in 17 different countries representing 260 million consumers. You know, and there, there's other, this aspect of financial inclusion as well, right? So we all know that there's 2 billion people in the world that are unbanked. Um, and half of them because they don't have an identity. Well, the nature of, the philosophical nature of what credit unions bring to the table, this is a natural fit to try and solve that problem. Yes, sir. Um, can you talk a little bit about the cost structure difference between going this way versus you know, the other way? Like, what are the savings from, from this? I won't be able to share those statistics yet because we're still in the middle of our pilots and I don't want to give you some misinformation there, but we'll be able, that's what we're doing. We're benchmarking a lot of the savings as it relates to fraud. Um, and also in call centers in particular, um, it is abandoned rate and it is time on the phone. Um, time is money, right? And um, be, the process that they have to go to go through right now is very tedious. And so we'll be, we're actually working with the credit unions right now and identifying what those KPIs are so that we can start benchmarking. And stay tuned, we'll be broadcasting those on our channel and Twitter channel and things. Are there any initial learnings, just surprises that have popped out early on in the pilot program? I don't think there are any big surprises yet other than um, the challenge of integration. You know? So we are an industry that is very reliant on third party relationships and those are the ones that have the control. Um, and so getting um, access to resources and time has been, been the biggest challenge but not as big a surprise. So we're trying to w find some ways to work on that to provide more scale and that is through more wholesale relationships with those third party relationships. All right, I think I've exceeded my time, thank you.